Okay, so we are very happy to have Sachin here, Sachin Jain from ISR Pune. He was supposed to give this talk in our conference, but unfortunately he could not. And we are happy that uh, he could do it now. So over to you, Sachin. Okay, thank you. Uh, and thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, speak uh, here. Uh, unfortunately, I, I missed the very nice uh, like the seminar and the uh, conference that you organized, but uh, I listened to a few of them later on. Okay, so uh, so I, I'll be talking about this uh, momentum space uh, correlation functions, and uh, the main two references are uh, these two, which I wrote with Renjan and Vinay, and there's an upcoming paper uh, which will be uh, up in a couple of weeks, maybe uh, two three weeks with Aditya, a um, student here, fifth year student, uh, undergrad student, obviously a PhD student, Amin who is here and Nilay. So uh, uh, yeah, so let me uh, start uh, briefly with uh, motivation and then I'll uh, go on to a little detail. So uh, please feel free to stop whenever people have any questions, okay? So, uh, you know, motivation is uh, uh, why do one wants to study momentum space, uh, correlation, CFT correlation function in momentum space? First of all, uh, direct Feynman diagram calculations, uh, you know, are in momentum space. And uh, uh, there, if you want to match with any, you know, Feynman diagram calculation, uh, having things in momentum space is very, very useful. Uh, that's one motivation. Second motivation is you know, in cosmological correlation functions, uh, momentum space uh, correlation functions are much more natural. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, th there is a application uh, there. And uh, also like, you know, uh, critical transport uh, and various places, momentum space correlation functions are uh, really, really useful. So it, it will be nice to have a good understanding of uh, momentum space uh, things. Uh, although position space and uh, you know Melin space people have invested a lot of time, but momentum space uh, uh, not, not much has been investigated. Uh, so uh, th there are uh, some reasons for that, which I'll discuss in a bit. But uh, you can ask like how to, uh, so one of the things that we'll be computing are like two point, uh, three point and four point functions in momentum space. So uh, you, so there are various approaches uh, that you can take. Uh, number one, you can take, you can directly take Fourier transform. You might think that uh, given a position space answer, uh, you can take a Fourier transform and get the result. Uh, but it turns out that uh, actually it's very, very difficult uh, thing to do in most of the situation. And uh, uh, it has two features that it is difficult uh, doing Fourier transform directly. And B, it does not also, you know, position space result, if I want to calculate, uh, for example, I have three inserts on our operators, theta one, theta two, theta three, uh, position space results are uh, generally given uh, when uh, uh, they are separated, you know, uh, this X1, X2, X3. Uh, when uh, they are at a separated point. Uh, that, that's when the, we know the uh, uh, generally uh, position space results we calculate at the separated points. But uh, as you know, uh, doing Fourier transform, I need to do an integration over the space. So I would also require uh, at the coincident points. And uh, often these coincident points lead to some singularity and divergences. So uh, th that's a bit of a difficult task uh, in general to do. So uh, that's why it is not uh, not done. Okay. Second is, sorry, just to make sure if people are uh, here or not, I, I'm not because I, I can't see. Uh, ah, I, yeah, yeah, we, we, we are, we are there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, se second, so direct Fourier transform is not uh, uh, good, but uh, uh, you know, there, there is a uh, way that uh, many people have de developed uh, most notably by Skenderis. Uh, and uh, collaborators, uh, what they do is that they just implement conformal invariance directly in the momentum space uh, in terms of second or differential equations. 
meaning uh, they write down uh, what is a dilatation operator in the momentum space as well as what is the spatial conformal transformation in the momentum space and it turns out to be a second order differential equation and uh, uh, so uh, you know dilatation dilatation uh, corresponding to a first order differential equation and uh, spatial conformal transformation that leads to a second order uh, differential equation in momentum space okay uh, in in momentum space and uh, then uh, they solve for it that is actually very efficient uh, but uh, you know uh, this also goes on to uh, this, this generally very efficient but uh, this also becomes a bit complicated uh, if i uh, you know with certain code letters and uh, uh, it also leads to you know uh, it has a feature that uh, uh, you know it will lead to divergences so you have to cure divergences by counter term uh, you have to renormalize etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, this is uh, uh, one general way that people take uh, very recently, uh, Daniel Bowman and collaborators, Pimentel and other, uh, they have developed uh, another way, which is uh, using dimension right, raising, dimension raising, and uh, spin raising operator. So uh, what they do is that they will start with a scalar correlator, scalar CFT correlator, sc scalar, scalar CFT correlator in the momentum space and then act with this dimension raising and the spin raising operator to reach uh, wherever, uh, whichever correlator that I'm interested in. For example, suppose I'm interested in J mu, J nu, uh, O. Uh, so this is a scalar, O is a scalar. Then I'll start with theta, theta, uh, some scalar operator, some delta one, delta two, delta three, some delta here, and act with some operators here, okay? Some strings of operators to reach here. This is another way. So, uh, so uh, the, these are the, uh, the these are the uh, things that people have studied. Uh, so th this is mostly involving, uh, you know, people have done uh, till now, you know, involving this in two point and three point function in the momentum space. Uh, Sachin, yes. Uh, for the last thing, you don't have any analog in position space, right? What you are changing is the spin and the delta also. No, uh, last thing, uh, last thing does have an analog in the momentum space, uh, position uh, space. Okay, I see. And, so uh, this was done in Penedones paper, Penedones and collaborator paper in eleven zero nine something spinning control correlator and spinning control block paper. Ah, okay. Uh, so, so these are what I mean. It's some sort of a, uh, some 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 kind of way you change the representation. Of, uh, yeah, that's of, right. So you know, you have to uh, you have to construct some set of uh, operator uh, such that it will change the representation. Okay. I'll come back to uh, one concrete example. I see. Uh, Sachin and uh, d d these uh, correlators include contact uh, contact terms sometimes. Yeah. So that that's a very good question. Yeah. So you know um, the contact terms. So it includes local terms. Local terms meaning like, let's say I have. Uh, you know, uh, let's say I have T mu nu, uh, theta theta. So a position space generally we uh, work in the separated point, but you know, I can have del mu T mu nu and that can lead to a theta theta two point function in the right hand side, right? Uh, so these correlators will actually contain this kind of, these are called local terms. These correlators will contain this local term, but the contact terms, those are actually uh, will not be content in general. So, you know, th those contact terms in the momentum space are polynomials in momenta. They generally miss out those kind of term, you know, uh, both Skenderis's analysis, uh, uh, this, uh, this analysis and uh, this analysis, they generally miss out those, those terms. But it turns out what I'm going to discuss today, this uh, higher spin equations, it is very important that you need to take care of those contact terms very carefully in order for it to work. Uh, I see, and they miss it out because, because they do an incomplete analysis or? No, I, I think those contact terms by themselves, uh, you know, uh, they don't do incomplete analysis. I, I think uh, the contact terms by themselves, uh, you know, are does not affect this uh, conformal invariance part. You know, they, I, I think they, they form, I have not checked this statement yet myself, but uh, I, I think they form, you know, they are by themselves, uh, set of them by themselves will become conformal invariance. So hence, if they don't include that, that doesn't matter for them. 
but but they but in classifying the conformal invariants, they should also then have the contact terms, right, as a separate conformal invariant. Yeah. So they don't. I, uh, yeah. Uh, neither in the Poisson space nor in momentum space. I don't think you know uh, people have given a quarter. What are the contact terms? That that classification has not been done very carefully. Okay. Thank you. But as we'll see, Siraz, you know, in a higher spin equation, uh, uh, we uh, unless I include those contact terms, it will not work. Higher spin equations do not work, so it will lead to contact terms. And uh, actually, you know, uh, uh, like for example, uh, you know, uh, for example, this will lead to a contact term of the form J mu k1. Uh, let's say this is k1 momentum of this of this form. Roughly, I'm talking about. And uh, 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 and this kind of contact term, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, what I mean is, let's say a epsilon mu nu, k epsilon mu nu rho, uh, k one rho kind of contact term. And this kind of contact term uh, was, uh, if you calculate directly using Feynman diagram in a particular theory, let's say in Chanson's model theory, you will see that this appears. And uh, higher spin equation actually requires them. Okay. Okay, so, so uh, it, uh, following up this, uh, in the yeah. higher spin case, also the contact terms will on their own be uh, invariant, and uh, this uh, will be separate invariants for the contact terms and the non-local, non-local terms. No, higher spin equation in order it to work, you you know uh, whatever higher spin equations are a, for a particular set of theory where you have either free field theory or you know you have transformers matter theory or slightly broken uh, higher spin symmetries. Uh, there, uh, you require everything together. I see, I see. Okay, interesting. Yeah. For, for example, you know, uh, Skenderis will, for example, will miss this kind of terms. For, for him, it is not, uh, like, he can take it uh, and, and try to do it independently, but it will not affect the other, other calculations. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, and uh, what about, so these are all done in the three point function uh, in the literature mostly. What about four point functions? So four point function, uh, there are various difficulties. Uh, first of all, you know, uh, momentum space, OP expansion are, are not very, very, uh, very, very well defined. Uh, so, uh, uh, that, you know, four point function generally the way we would like to think. You know, we, we think in terms of some uh, exchange of operators uh, you know, uh, that require OP expansion. Th those things do not actually are, are very not well defined in the momentum space. One might think that, you know, uh, that uh, let, let's say I have an, a three point function which is uh, theta of, let's say, you know, um, x uh, theta of y theta of z. One might think that you know OP expansion of theta of x minus y. Let, let me make it uh, theta of minus x and minus x. So uh, one would think that uh, this will go to theta of zero from a theta of z, some c. Uh, and if I do it in the momentum space, uh, so let's say this becomes q plus p theta of let's say I make it minus q plus p. I, I'm not very careful about the momentum assignments, but uh, you, you you might think that uh, uh, the op op analog of the op expansion which is like x goes to zero here will be analog q goes to infinity limit but that is not actually in general true so that's one thing uh, in the uh, moment of, about the momentum space op uh, second you know even more basic question uh, even more basic question which is like uh, uh, you know uh, uh, four point function generally the way you would like to think is that uh, uh, you have x3 and x4 and then you would uh, say like it it takes xij to the power some power f of u and v where u and v are conformal cross ratio even this statement uh, was not uh, understood is not uh, uh, is not very well understood was not understood uh, just a just couple of months back there was a paper by skenderis uh, which actually give gives this expression which uh, maybe I'll just show you uh, in a uh, in a, a minute. Uh, um, yeah. So this is the statement that you get in the mo uh, momentum space, uh, which uh, this is the uh, uh, paper, uh, which says that the, uh, this uh, is uh, what you will uh, get, uh, where uh, uh, this denominator is. I have written it here, and. Uh, 
so uh, here q1 q2 q3 are integration variable q1 q2 q3 and u and v which are looking like some cross ratios are they look like this okay so uh, th this is a very complicated and uh, ugly looking expression but this is the this is the expression in the momentum space uh, uh which they saw that uh, you know it exclusively satisfies the conformal invariance in the four point function case uh, for spinning correlator no such statement or anything has been done okay so uh four point function uh, at the four point function level very uh, relatively very less is understood uh, at the uh, in the momentum space okay so is there, is there any question or uh, anything? Okay. So, uh, okay. So, uh, what? Let, let me summarize what we have done, uh, and, and then uh, we'll go uh, we'll go slowly to some of the details. So, uh, let let me first uh, discuss number one at the level of two point function. So we'll be actually concentrating on 3D in three dimensions. At the level of two point function in three dimension, you know, th there is a, a, apart from parity even correlator, there is a chance of parity odd correlator. And uh, it turns out that parity odd correlators uh, has not been uh, discussed much in the literature. And there is a particular reason for it, which I'll come to in a minute. So, you know, uh, so uh, we have actually uh, systematically calculated the two point function parity odd uh, calculations, which are also very important in uh, for our higher spin equations to work. Uh, so, three point function, uh, you know, uh, three point function in 3D, uh, this parity odd uh, three point function in 3D. In the Poisson space, it was done by Siroman and, uh, you know, uh, and collaborators, Zine and Giambi and other. Uh, they, they wrote down systematically classifying, uh, you know, uh, higher spin uh, using, you know, uh, a 3D quarter involving parity or thing. Uh, even that thing has not been done in the a, a three dimension. Okay, so this is what is our upcoming paper, which will come up uh, very soon with the students and other people uh, with the uh, for the parity or uh, correlators. And then uh, uh, even at the level of four point function. Uh, at the level of four point function uh, there was no 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 calculation of even the free theory uh, there, there is a basic reason why th there was no such calculation uh, even here in the uh, sorry let, let me first emphasize in three point function what was the difficulty difficulty was that a parity even a parity odd correlator involves some you know epsilon epsilon which you have to involve and that led to very, very complicated, uh, that actually messes things up. And, uh, you know, uh, you have to use uh, a lot of identities to uh, make things work. So that was one of the difficulty. So th that, that, is, uh, that is why it was not actually understood well. Uh, at the level of four point function, what we have done is that, you know, uh, even explicit computation in the free theory was not uh, done. And uh, uh, the ba basic uh, difficulty was in uh, doing even the one loop integrations, how to do one loop int integrations systematically that was not understood or well explored. Uh, and uh, uh, say, let's say, you know, we have also, uh, we also have been able to actually calculate not only in the free theory, but also in chance summons matter theory using this higher spin equation, we have been able to calculate this four point function. Okay. So uh, th these are the things that uh, uh, I'll, I'll try to briefly discuss. So um, uh, are there any question or comment here? Okay. J just to make sure I I'm not speaking to the computer art people around. Ah, no, no, we, we are there. We are there. Oh, Don't sorry. worry. <laughs> yeah, nobody has switched on their video. So it, it's, some, it's sometimes bit, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So le let me actually start with a, a simple example. Uh, le let me start with a very simple example and try to describe various ways of uh, do, uh, ca calculating things. L let me start with uh, T mu nu. 
uh, theta theta, where uh, th this is a scalar, theta is a scalar. Uh, so I, let, let me concentrate on d is equal to three, okay? So delta is equal to one, this is delta is equal to one. So in position space, In position space, the uh, answer is actually uh, very simple. And, uh, you know, there are various places that has been given, including Sidemann's paper and uh, other people's paper. Uh, so, uh, so for delta, is, delta t is equal to three, and uh, you can calculate that uh, it, it will turn out to be mod x1 to mod x1 three, mod x2 three to the power five, with q1 to the power five, where uh, Q1 is some uh, some quantity which looks like this. Okay, so this is the t uh, t theta theta in the Poisson space. Uh, so uh, sorry, Q1 square. I'm really sorry. Uh, Sachin, could I just think? Yeah. Uh, Sachin, listen, I, I I'm just to apologize. I have to leave right now. Huh. Uh, I'm, I'll watch this at the recording of this video. I, 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 where can I find this later, later on? Uh, uh, we, it will be on our YouTube channel. YouTube. So I, I, can, I, I can send you the link. Thank yeah. you so much. I'll watch the recording and I'll ask you questions later on. No, no problem. No problem. Sorry about this. Okay. No. Yeah. So uh, in D is equal to three, in the position space, this is the answer. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, Q1 is some quantity, and uh, actually it's not very difficult to generalize uh, generalize this for a spinning correlator, other spinning correlator. And uh, in D is equal to three, uh, 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 this paper by Siroman and other, which actually systematically uh, does that calculation. However, in the momentum space, if I just try to write down this answer, this is actually very, very complicated. And uh, here is uh, an answer. Here is how the answer will look like. So in the momentum space, a T O O correlator is this, and uh, this will be in the transverse and the local piece. This local piece is what I was uh, talking you uh, uh, talking about. That you know, uh, these are the pieces where uh, the conservation del mu t mu uh, acting on j zero zero. Uh, this will take care of uh, those pieces. You know, uh, in the position space, uh, if I have del mu t mu theta theta. Uh, this uh, terms are some summation over theta theta. Uh, these are the terms uh, which will take care of uh, th those kind of contributions. Okay, so here I have uh, written down uh, this local piece, and as you can see, these are actually constructed out of these two point functions. And uh, uh, in order to construct this transverse thing, this transverse part is the part where actually when you are well separated point and the de del mu t mu uh, so this uh, this becomes non zero only at the uh, coincident point when del mu t mu is coinciding with the other theta uh, that is a water entity uh, uh, sachin sorry to interrupt i don't see why you call this local because it's not really uh, it, it is not really polynomial right in case Oh, well, you know, lo local is a, just a terminology. Uh, I, I, I'll come to exact details. J0, J0 is, of course, you know, it will be either proportional to mod K. So that way, you see, this is a, uh, just a polynomial in K1 mu and K1 mu. Okay? So the, yeah, yeah. Here, but the other terms are not like K1 mu, K1 mu my, by K square is certainly not a local in the usual sense. No? Yeah, you know, th th there are two terminologies. These are called uh, local terms. Uh, so local in the sense, as you see in the position space, they, they correspond to T minu theta theta. They correspond to a point when X1 hits X2. That is what in, in what sense it corresponds to local. So it is delta functions or, you know, for derivatives of delta functions, right? That's what you mean. Yeah. In, in yeah. uh, these kind of so terms. The, here, as we know, uh, this will be like uh, derivatives of the delta functions. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. But the other terms like k1 mu, k1 nu by k1 square, they don't seem very local to me. Yeah, yeah. So they, they will, you know, the, the, there's a, another thing that you need to uh, impose, which is the uh, under g mu, t mu should be traceless. Then that t, uh, a traceless t mu, a trace of the t, uh, t mu is I'm call, calling it as t. So t at x1, theta at x2, and theta at x3. 
So when uh, this actually uh, goes to uh, here, uh, the, uh, these are the two kinds of term that, that are actually represented here. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I'm saying this, the word local is not in the usual sense of the word then. It is, uh, uh, you mean there are, it's simply the, uh, the, not, the, not, the not the transverse piece, whatever is. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah not so the transverse. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Not the transverse. Uh, so, you know, there, there are two terminologies. One is local and versus the contact terms. Contact terms are, uh, I, I think what you're referring to are contact terms. Those are not here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, th these are the two pieces and then you have to construct this transverse space and the construction of the, to construct the transverse space, you need to define some projectors. So uh, here is one projector, which is transverse to one of the momenta P. And uh, uh, this is a projector, which is uh, uh, both transverse with respect to, you know, uh, here is a statement with respect to P mu, P nu, or P alpha, P beta uh, here, and it also traceless, okay? So uh, you can then construct uh, this transverse space as the follows. Uh, you write down this term and then allow for all possible terms here, okay? You can allow for all possible terms in the sense, uh, let, let me try to write ju just to make things more clear. You can try to write down terms of the form. Uh, you might think that I can write down K, K1 mu, uh, K1 mu, but that is not allowed because, uh, you know, uh, th that is not allowed because pi with K1 mu, that is zero, right? So, uh, you can then go for K2, K2, that is okay. But you can think that I can also write B times K3 mu, K3 nu. That is also not allowed. That is also not an independent structure because uh, there's a momentum conservation. K1 plus K2 plus K3 is zero. So K3 is equal to minus K1 minus K2. And then you, when you substitute back here, uh, this quantity, it actually leads to this unique structure. Okay, and this is the form factor. Okay, so this transverse part, uh, th this form factor, you know, if I follow uh, this uh, direct momentum space conformal invariance, uh, that actually uh, leads to, uh, I, I can use the direct conformal space, uh, 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 direct uh, conformal space, uh, you know, dilatation and uh, spatial conformal water entities. There, in general, you have to solve uh, this kind of differential equation. This corresponds to uh, dilatation. Uh, this one uh, corresponds to dilatation, which is a first order differential equation. And this corresponds to uh, if you have a spatial conformal uh, identity. Uh, if you have spinning coordinator like TOO, T is a spinning coordinator. On top of it, uh, you have to add this term, okay? The, this here, I wrote it, sorry, here I wrote it for the scalar correlator, but here uh, on top of it, you have to add uh, the spinning part to it. Uh, one question, uh, Sachin. Yes. Uh, so does the transverse and the local part separately satisfy what you call local, okay? This, this two separately satisfy these equations? No, yeah. Uh, so they, they don't uh, separately satisfy these equations. Uh, the, the, the way it happens is the following. Let me just uh, tell you. Uh, yeah, one second. So the way it, uh, it happens that suppose you act with, uh, let me call dilatation identity is easy. This is the, uh, th this is the special conformal identity that, that is a second order differential equation. Uh, let me call that K kappa. K kappa on let's say T theta theta I act. And then it becomes T theta theta uh, transverse plus T theta theta local, okay? Uh, this thing actually leads to something called primary wire identity, primary word identity. And uh, this another is, is something that is called secondary water identity. Secondary water identity. Primary water identities are second order differential equation which only involves the uh, transverse part. Secondary water entities are first or first or differential equation. They not only involve transverse part, but uh, as well the local part. So uh, transverse part, uh, uh, so, uh, transverse part actually comes only in the primary water entity, but the uh, transverse plus the, plus the local piece 
comes into the uh, secondary water entity. Uh, why this is important? Let's say, uh, let's say I have a little more complicated coverter, some JS1, JS2, JS3, okay? Then in general, there will be many, many form factors. For TOO, we saw there was only one form factor, if you remember. Let me just show you once more. Uh, yeah, sorry, it, it, it was somewhere. Uh, yeah, so here for TOO, it was only uh, one form factor. But uh, JS, it can have n number of form factors, okay? And there will be complicated pies, projection operator, et cetera, I'm not writing. So there, there can be n, n can be, you know, uh, one to some n number, okay? Then the primary identity will only involve second order differential equation, a n. Uh, and uh, then you, if you solve for it, you will get, uh, you know, uh, n, Uh, I am, you are there? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm there. It uh, had a little bit of internet issue, but I'm there. Yeah, so AN will have, uh, you know, if I solve for this N number of uh, thing, then I'll have some number of uh, constants, which are undetermined from the primary uh, identity, which are second order differential equation. But uh, when you uh, take the secondary order identity, which are first order differential equation, you will get a constant, you know, CNs will be uh, now related to each other or it will be determined in terms of those two point functions. Okay. Sorry, I lost a little bit. What is, what are CNs? Yeah, uh, what are CNs is the, is the following. Uh, so, you know, uh, JS1 to JS3, uh, let's say, it will have n number of form factors. For example, theta has only one form factor, which we saw only A, right? But it, in general, more complicated quarter have more number of form factors, which you need to determine. Then the, uh, if you act with the K kappa, you will get primary water entity. And if you solve for it, you will get some number of undetermined constants. Those are CNs. Constants meaning what? They're, they're not dependent on the momentum. They're in momentum yeah, independent. They're uh, momentum independent, right. They're oh, momentum okay. independent. I see. Okay. And the secondary water identity, which are uh, first order differential equation, will determine some of these uh, constants. Okay. To, to give you a concrete example, if you take TTT in three dimension, it turns out it has, uh, you can write down five form factors. If you solve for it, you will get five constants, five constants. But if you act with the secondary, sec secondary water identity, then you will see that at the end, only two independent constants remain. And from there, you, you know, you, you can trace back actually, in, uh, it turns out that, uh, yeah. So that, 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 that is what the secondary water entry does, okay? So these constants in, mo in position space, they correspond to some delta functions or what, the, what is the interpretation in position so space? This constant this? will be related to, you know, uh, will be related to, you know, OP coefficient numbers, you know? Ah, OP coefficient numbers. Okay, yeah, thank yeah. you, thank you, okay. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, the position space uh, calculation was easy uh, as we discussed here. Then we discussed the second order differential equation way. Uh, second order differential equation way was that, you know- Yeah, uh, Sachin, I'm a little bit confused because normally when we do in uh, position space, this kind of calculations, uh, yeah. this kind of structure, uh, this kind of uh, three point uh, functions, they are inputs, right, to the computation. But somehow you are able to determine them here in the momentum space. This this looks a little bit uh, no 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 help. No. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't follow them. So yeah. these constants no, are not just the word identity. It's the usual L zero L minus one that kind of a word identity mm -hmm. which will fix the form. So usually what you do in the three point functions that you can write it as a differential equation maybe. Just saying yeah. okay scaling is something. So k d by d k somehow all those things are scaling and so on. Yeah, but what are these CNs? These are related to these three point functions or what? I mean, this this... One, let, let, let me answer. Oh, okay. Yeah, so let, let's say you do TTT in the position space as well. You know, you will not get only one structure. You can, you, there, there are uh, four or five structures, okay? So you'll get C1, one structure, one structure, C2, another structure, uh, let's say C5, another structure, okay? You, you but uh, one of them is, say, the central charge is involved in, say, one of them, right? Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, so, so my question is that, uh, are you able to determine the central charge this way no, in no, this, no, uh, no, because no, you said, no, no. okay, no. 
no no okay so you're saying that you are not uh, so because you said that you can determine all the cns no, so no, this no, is no, what I, confused I, me no, sorry sorry I, I should have said it more carefully uh, you know what you will do now if you impose del mu t t t to be zero you will see that this even in the position space you will get certain relation between these arbitrary constraints okay of course of course yeah because there's only one independent central charge for for example which will relate this uh, things for, yeah. for example ttt in the uh, in three dimension has three independent uh, structures which are uh, ttt of free fermion ttt of free boson uh, or in four dimension as well and ttt uh, you know let, let me do it four dimension that is much more easier and uh, that is uh, free gauge field okay so you will get c1 c2 and c3 uh, to start with you will get many many structures uh, let me call a1 a2 and a3 you will start with here if you write down all possible terms allowed in ttt you will get many many structures but the, at the end you will be able to relate those things in terms of uh, a1 a2 this uh, all in terms of a1 a2 a3 okay this yeah, thank, you, thank you okay this is clarified and in 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 fermion but such a uh, quick question the second method which is standard which you use is like you use the symmetries and you try to fix it this looks like the differential version of the same thing no in some ways the symmetries mean different? what kind of symmetry i'm sorry like conformal you... symmetries i mean this is all there is in the problem right no 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 you know there's little more than the conformal symmetry here what are these uh, then what are these void void identities or whatever what's the, yeah. what do they stand yeah. for so this uh, you know uh, it, it turns out that the conformal uh, conformal symmetry uh, just gives you these structures okay uh, there there are these structures like q1 i wrote there are you can write down various uh, structures like q1 q2 q3 there are other structures and then you can construct conformally invariant structures and ttt will be in general uh, linear combination of those conformal invariant structure and conformal invariance will not give you c1 c2 uh, any anything but let's say you on top of it demand that uh, it's a also a conserved current it need not be a conserved current but on top of it you demand it's a conserved current then you get a certain set of constants okay okay hmm. uh. but in the position space also is the same thing right you have this uh, the water entities yeah. can be written in terms of differential equations uh, and uh, that the correlation functions have to satisfy it no yeah you you can yeah. do that but you know uh, what i'm saying is that uh, here i'm calling it to be zero because I, i want it to be a well separated point right but in the momentum space i cannot really do that in the momentum space because of the fourier uh, fourier transformation uh, you you cannot uh, there is no point there, there is nothing like separated point right But yeah, even yeah, sure, in, sure. but even in, in the real space, space you have to be a little more careful while implementing this conservation that, that, that that's the whole point that the, because the, in real space there are singularities i mean of course things come together no but i'm saying i can there are those singularities make, in your thing but i can choose to make x1 x2 x3 to be well separated point that, that, that that's my choice yeah. oh okay 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 fine but yeah, what he's saying that kin you can use kinematics to get rid of singularities whereas in momentum space you cannot do that okay that's i think right. that's the point yeah yeah okay okay so you know uh, i i described the second way which is the differential equation on a i have not uh, you know i have shown you the differential equation and then you plug back uh, plug back this answer that i talked about uh, on that uh, on that uh, on that equation and then you will get a differential equation second order differential equation in a uh, you will get a second order differential equation t o o you will get a second order differential equation in a and you have to solve for it okay so that that's the second way let me discuss the third way which is using uh, di dimension raising operator okay uh, so uh, le let me uh, just uh, write it out a dimension raising operator so uh, a dimension raising and the spin raising operator what do they do is that they take a particular representation of the con conformal uh, this thing conformal representation and they they change that representation okay so for example uh, uh, let me construct uh, i am not going to show how it is been constructed but you can construct it uh, this was done in daniel moments uh, paper uh, this particular equator the poisson space hartson was available earlier uh, in his paper uh, so j1 dot k1 w12 minus minus where 
k1 2 vector is equal to del del k1 vector minus del del k2 vector where w12 minus minus is equal to k12 vector k12 vector okay so you see this is d uh, this uh, d12 what it does it increases it increases the spin uh, it increases the spin at one okay because uh, you know uh, i have written it with respect to z1 z1 is a polarization at one so uh, what it will do is that uh, it will increase the spin uh, at uh, one okay so uh, similarly you can write down d13 uh, similarly so what you can do uh, the other uh, procedure uh, you can act you can start with a scalar phi and the theta delta theta and because it is increasing spin here it will it will make it theta theta okay Yeah, so Sachin, I'm just trying to understand what what is being done here. So yeah. normally, if you take a, a primary operator, you can always act derivatives on it and do something to change the representation, right? So is it something like that in position space, or it is something different? Yeah, you know, uh, the the point is that uh, if you just take a operator and then take a derivative, uh, you have to combine in a particular way such that it becomes a conformal invariant, right? Yeah, so you have to take a while covariant derivative essentially. That's yeah, what you're saying. it will be related okay. to that. Uh, this d one two uh, are actually in a Poisson space. Uh, uh, also, you know, some uh, so it, it will of the, it will be of the form like uh, x one mu uh, del del x x one square. You know, th this kind of stuff. Del del, del x one dot del del x two. Th there will be some complicated Poisson space uh, correlator, a Poisson space differential operator. Which you convert to the momentum space, and you will get uh, of this form. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you. Okay. Yeah. It will. You have to. Uh, uh, the best way to construct them is in the uh, go to the embedding space in the Poisson space, and there you can very easily construct them. And then you have to come back to the uh, real space and then make a Fourier transform to get them. Okay. Okay. So uh, he, here I've just shown you uh, another way, uh, way of uh, doing the same calculation. Uh, all of them have their own advantages and uh, disadvantages. Uh, uh, before uh, before going into the higher spin thing that uh, uh, that, uh, that I'm going to show in a minute, um, the advantage, uh, the disadvantage of uh, this first way of calculating uh, uh, what Skinder is done, it becomes very soon very complicated. Okay. Suppose I'm interested in a, a little more complicated operator, which I I need to calculate for something, and uh, let's say I'm interested in the four-point function uh, of spinning operator. This becomes very very complicated, and uh, it is not uh, very very useful in those cases. Similarly, this also although looks like a, a simple, but uh, you know uh, there are uh, some difficulty with this. Uh, some difficulties in the sense uh, that uh, first of all, uh, uh, this uh, this is not unique. Uh, this way of doing it is not unique, and uh, uh, you uh, you have to find out various ways of uh, doing it. Uh, uh, yeah, so let let me just describe uh, more precisely what I mean. Um, yeah, so suppose I start with a uh, some, some, suppose I I start with some some scalar correlator, and I want to reach to some JS one JS two JS. Okay, uh, I want to do something to reach here. Okay, in general, uh, you need to find this out, but subject to the constraint that you need to the final thing uh, need to satisfy uh, need to satisfy uh, transverse water entities that we discussed. That uh, this JS one, JS two, JS three need to have correct local terms. Okay, and in general, uh, and then even after getting there. You need to find out all possible terms which are uh, transverse. So first, uh, first thing that you need to make sure is that uh, it produces produces correct local terms. And second thing that you need to make sure is that uh, uh, you know uh, second thing that you need to make sure is that uh, 
uh, then uh, you you can add then you can add any transverse piece to it okay transverse and local uh, is is what i defined earlier okay and in general this is not very easy task to do uh, it can it can become very complicated uh, uh, soon because the differential operators are also not very easy if you act say, let's say four or five of them uh, but you can do it but uh, yeah so uh, let me now go to uh, the higher spin uh, the third way the another way of doing it uh, the uh, higher spin thing so what are the uh, higher spin uh, uh, algebra higher spin algebras are the uh, is the following that let's say i have a theory which is a, a free bosonic theory okay let's say del mu phi then uh, uh, you know let's say i'm in three dimension then you can construct uh, you can construct the operator which is spin zero operator which is phi bar phi then spin one operator phi bar del mu phi and then the appropriate uh, term uh, uh, t mini operator uh, this is t mini operator stress tensor then you can construct spin three currents you can construct spin four currents you know you can construct infinite number of uh, currents which are all conserved okay for free theory you can do it for free fermionic theory as well Uh, another operate another other other theories that you can do it for for example critical bosonic theory by critical bosonic theory meaning you uh, can turn on a lambda phi to the power four term and uh, tune to the critical point just like wilson fisher fixed point and there also you can uh, that is again a, a cft there also you can actually calculate uh, the, you will again get uh, some set of uh, this higher spin equation similarly in the fermionic side you can do it uh, so let's say uh, what is the higher spin equations let's say you have this current this will correspond to some particular charge right for example uh, j mu correspond to a charge j0 integration which we call the charge q t mu nu corresponds to you know t00 or t0 i uh, these are you know we call momenta and these are this is the hamiltonian these are the charges that i am talking about you know with the appropriate integration for j mu this thing also you can construct the charges okay now uh, how to use them uh, that is what i am to describe uh, uh, briefly so uh, here uh, i have uh, uh, here i have uh, given um, higher spin algebra so here i have written higher spin algebra so this this correspond to spin 3 current charge correspond to spin 3 current and this correspond to charge corresponding to spin 4 current you can uh, calculate uh, what is the commutator of q q3 with j0 or q3 with the spin 1 or uh, you know q4 with the spin 0 currents and uh, you will get something like this okay uh, sorry uh, what is zero minus what yeah yeah sorry sorry yeah. Uh, so uh, the metric that we are taking this is the flat space metric uh, flat space metric that we are taking dx minus d uh, x plus and dy square okay these are the light cone directions uh, so the charge that i i want to define uh, it turns out that if i define the charge in a way uh, such that uh, you know um, it is dy j minus minus let's say for spin 3 current I, i'll do that so this is the charge which will be most useful for us okay and uh, uh, so this is the minus that i'm writing here okay so uh, ju just to ma make it more clear so you see because uh, in the right hand side uh, there is a dx plus that i'm integrating over with the j minus so this q will have a uh, effective charge Uh, effective uh, you know spin which is minus minus direction that's why uh, when q3 with the commutator on j0 j0 is spinless uh, spin zero thing will have a two minus in the right hand side okay you can uh, convince yourself that you cannot really write down any other terms here uh, uh, you know first of all uh, because of the uh, dimensions 
you know, because uh, uh, very asymmetries, including that you know, dimensionally things will not be allowed, spinning, uh, spin thing will not allow, or you know, uh, parity will not allow things. The, the, this kind of consideration uh, you will be able to fix this thing in Italy, Okay. Is the minus thing clear, uh, Ayanda? Hello? I think uh, Ayan has gone offline. Oh, Ayan has gone offline. Okay. But at least I got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, mean, I can't say for Ayan. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, shall I go ahead or shall I wait for Ayan? Okay. He must have just got kicked out. Huh. So, yeah, you continue, continue. Okay. So, hmm, he, has, he has joined. He's back. Yeah. Uh, I, sorry, I'm back. Yeah, I got because of there was a power cut and uh, it took some time to. Uh, so, yeah, okay. so, I was asking about what is the zero minus and plus? Yeah. What are these yeah. notations? Yeah. Okay, sorry. So, uh, so first of all, uh, I explained that you know the metric that I'm working it's a flat metric, but I'm just writing in the light cone coordinate dx minus dx plus uh, and dy square, and I'm defining a charge Q which I take uh, uh, let's say spin three current. It's minus directions. Uh, with, I'm integrating with respect to uh, dx plus and dy. This is a particular charge that I'm constructing. Okay. So uh, this charge Q will have okay. Uh, sure, sure. Okay. Th this charge will have uh, these two spins, which correspond to this minus minus, and uh, you know J zero is a spin zero spin zero uh, operator, which is let's say for example for free theory it will be like five or five. Okay, and so right hand side you will see that you need two minuses because Q has two minuses. So uh, th this is a way you can construct and you can show uh, that you know these are the unique structures in the right hand side you can construct. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to write down the water entity. This is a very familiar water entity that we know that, you know, if there is a high spin symmetry, which is conserved, then within a correlator, uh, if I have uh, this kind of thing, uh, then uh, just a symmetry, high spin symmetry will imply that within a correlator, uh, this has to be zero. Okay. Here, you know, I have just inserted it on a, so I, I'll illustrate this with an example. Uh, I'll take again the example of TOO, how to calculate TOO. Let's say I'm acting with Q4 on J0, 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 this three point function. So this is the commutator I'll, I'm going to get, uh, you know, first on this J0, on the second and on the third. And then uh, I'm just going to use uh, this algebra. Q4 on J0 uh, commutator has uh, del minus Q J0 and del minus T minus minus. Okay, that's all I have done. You see, I've, I've just replaced Q4 on J0 with this. Uh, Q4 on J0 uh, with this. Okay. And then the permutations. The permutations are uh, this and this. Okay. So. In the position space, uh, uh, you, you can check it, but my aim is to get the results in the momentum space. What I do is that I do a Fourier transform of it, uh, of these equations, uh, of the equations uh, that I uh, that I uh, have with here. And one interesting fact of it is that every this differential equation in the Fourier space becomes a algebraic equation. Okay, and then. If you know J0, 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 this scalar three point function, then uh, just solving this algebraic equation, you will be able to get uh, T minus J0, uh, J0, J0, including both the local piece as well as the transverse piece. Okay. Is, is this okay? Is there any question here? So uh, the, the point I just wanted to emphasize is that uh, the higher spin symmetry, what it does, it relates a scalar to spinning operators, right? So uh, I should be, uh, one of the point is that I should be able to use scalar correlators 
to construct higher spin correlators by using higher spin symmetry. That, that is the point. And, uh, you know, suppose you want a J2S, J0, J0 kind of thing, you will act with, you know, something like Q2S plus two on, on uh, Q2S plus two on J0, J0, J0. And one of the quantity, it will give you a J2S, J0, J0. And again, you will get uh, algebraic equation. Uh, and that is all you have to solve. No differential equation or anything. Uh, no differences or anything. Uh, at the end, all you have to do using this is to solve some algebraic equation. Okay. So, you know, uh, so this is uh, example I, I thought, uh, uh, there are situations where uh, higher spin equations are not exactly conserved. Uh, uh, Sachin, sorry, I a little bit lost you. So uh, what is now, the, what do, how do you define now this uh, transverse and what you call the local part here? Yeah, so you know, uh, uh, the, the point is that this equation uh, will contain, uh, it, it has to have uh, all the inputs in it, right? Uh, unless I have, Local piece in the momentum space is actually already determined, right? A local piece is determined, I know, or in the position space is determined uh, in terms of uh, the two point functions. That is how the local piece are defined, right? So, no, I thought that local piece you wanted to say is not necessarily local in position space. Uh, you said that it is related to this, like uh, del mu t menu was, uh, so it was transverse. Actually, what you call is transverse and longitudinal, rather, this kind of thing, no? Yeah, yeah. So the local, that is the terminology that we'll be using. This local piece is something the longitudinal, which is comes due to del mu t mu uh, when it uh, goes and acts on uh, either of these operators, okay? Yeah, yeah. But in the higher spin const context, is there some similar thing? Like with, for when you have Q instead of uh, this T, yeah. some higher spin current, is there some natural way to separate this? Uh, you have also similar separation. Uh, between uh, what you call this uh, transverse and longitudinal or no uh, you, you know uh, the point is that uh, uh, i'll input uh, i'll input the total ttt right total ttt in the momentum space is broken into uh, transverse and the longitudinal space and then you know th that is where i'll start with in the higher spin equation and see it is satisfied or not okay if it is not satisfied, then I will be forced to add some, uh, uh, you know, contact terms so, so that it works out. So uh, th th that is the logic that we are going to use, okay? Okay. You know, so T, uh, it's a independent of uh, a fact that T can be written in the momentum space as a transverse part plus as the local part, right? It's an it's a independent fact. And uh, I, I, we are, I'm just using that. So uh, then I plug this back and the local part is actually totally determined, right? Uh, there's nothing to determine there, local part. Uh, only thing that is undetermined is this transverse part. So transverse part, uh, there is a form factor that I would like to determine. And uh, uh, what I'm showing is that the high spin equation becomes uh, rather than a differential equ equation, it becomes an algebraic equation. Hence you would be able to solve it, okay? Because you have to use the other word identities too. The word identities are higher. The, this, uh, that is why it becomes algebraic because of using is constrained by other word identities. So. Uh, no, so you, you see in the position space, this is the higher spin equation. Uh, in the position space, this is the higher spin equation. Okay? This just follows from the higher spin equations. The Q3 on J0 is, uh, uh, these are the things. Then I just act, I just use higher spin word identity. And then I'll get a, some differential equation on the position space. But I just convert that, day, I just make a Fourier transform of it, okay? I don't, you know, this is what is the momentum space version of it, which I would like to determine. These are the things I would like to determine. And uh, then I just, uh, uh, it's an algebraic equation, so I can just solve it. And that, that is the basic logic. Yeah, but I am a bit lost because uh, in the earliest presentation, you said that you first write all possible structures when yeah. you in, when you want to determine this tra transverse part, you wrote all possible structures, right? And then you implemented these differential equations on these structures. Yeah. And you, yeah. then you saw that uh, up to some constants, they're determined completely. Uh, yeah. But what is the story here? I didn't follow because- uh, uh, Yeah, yeah. So, so the, 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 
you know higher spin equations uh, there the story was that you know you write down the all possible structure let me go back to uh, uh, let me go back to the uh, stress tensor thing stress tensor this is the transverse spin you know and, and there is a local phase too uh, the the point is that in the uh, e, uh, there the higher spin equation is not true for arbitrary theory right it is only true for uh, some cfds or wherever it has a higher spin symmetry right so uh, what it will do those unknown coefficient it will fix to some particular values uh, say for example in the chancerman theories those unknown coefficient will be explicitly fixed in terms of uh, you know coupling constant in the chancerman matter theories like the lambda or, and the or the kappa those, those things. okay so those freedoms will not be there so uh, I, i'll get the form factors and form factors are independent of in uh, the theories the constants will be totally fixed there in the higher spin equation Okay, so here is the difference. I see, but but I but uh, what is the strategy you follow to solve these equations that simply didn't completely follow? Because uh, do you write some sort of answers for this in terms of the transverse fees? You write some answers in terms of like all possible terms that can appear, and then you show that it reduces to an algebraic equation when you in implement this ward identities for the higher spin charges. Yes, you know, higher spin equation gives you an algebraic equation on the form factors. And then you just solve the algebraic equation. That that's all you do. And the claim is that it re, it then relates the transverse and the longitudinal part, right? That is what you're saying. Yeah, it yeah. relates. Unless this. you put in the longitudinal parts, this equation will not satisfy. So everything is a tightly fixed there. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. And what will what will happen is that you know uh, if I just write down this transverse and this longitudinal phase, sometimes this equation will not be satisfied. And then you have to put in some extra local terms to satisfy, and then that's how you uh, you will determine uh, some sorry co contact terms. That, that's how we will determine. Okay, Sachin. So, so here, local by by local, you mean actually local, not lo not transfer, not longitudinal. You mean actually contact terms when in 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 uh, position space. Yeah, so okay. there, there are three terminology. Like transverse, transverse is del mu acting on it is zero. Local is coming due to the uh, water entity, you know, conservation water entities. Those are the local pieces I, I call. And uh, contact terms are really the delta function pieces. Okay. So, for, for example, I can have a delta function piece like. So one minus six. Three. Those are the those are the things I'll I'll call as the contact terms. Okay. So yeah. Now you know uh, you you can actually uh, go and uh, you can uh, actually do it for uh, higher spin equation when the situation is higher spin equation is slightly broken, uh, which is the case in various uh, examples. Uh, And uh, it again turns out that uh, very nicely the right hand side, which is uh, you know uh, earlier it was zero. If it was conserved, then it was zero. But actually, for, if it is not conserved, you will get something non-zero here. And uh, uh, th this is the modification to previous equation that you will get something non-zero in the right hand side. And uh, 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 if you go to the momentum space, it turns out that even this equation, this all the integrations actually go away in the momentum space. And it just becomes it just becomes a again just multiplication of some uh, three point function in the right hand side. So uh, th that is also a, actually very very nice feature. Uh, uh, in general, you may not have expected uh, you know the integrations that appear in the right hand side to go away, but it turns out with a little algebra, uh, uh, everything again you get it is not an integral differential equation. You just get a Uh, it is not an integral equation. You just get an equation which is algebraic equation, even with the higher spin. Uh, higher spin thing is broken. Okay. Uh, this actually we have been able to show uh, th this to work uh, even uh, if I deform the theory away from the conformal fixed point, uh, which are uh, actually in the progress. That if I deform the theory with a mass or a five-fold theory, uh, or, uh, or or you know if I deform, I'll be able to actually uh, use this set of equations to determine the correlation function. As well as it turns out that even at the finite temperature, we have checked in the case of three theories that uh, 
uh, I can use uh, these equations uh, to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the quotient and function actually satisfies this equation, even at finite we, we have not uh, calculated explicitly for interacting uh, theories in the, uh, at finite temperature, but uh, uh, th those things I, uh, I believe will also work out. Sorry, here I lost you. So you had, uh, where does finite temperature come in now? I mean, this is, all these things were in vacuum and then uh, uh, so how, how do you say something about finite temperature from all this? Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, so the, the point is that, uh, so what you can do is that, let's say you start with the free theory calculation, free bosonic theory, and you calculate the finite temperature, just introducing finite temperature, you calculate the coercion function, okay? I want to test first at, at finite temperature whether or not uh, high spin equation works or not. Okay, I want to test that, and then I'm going to use that uh, for later on to calculate in more complicated cases. But for free theory, what you can do, uh, you can simply, you know, uh, for for free theory, what you can do. Let, let me just show you uh, one thing: is that you know, uh, you you can do for free theory. Uh, this, this is a nice calculation that you can do. J zero, J zero minus 24 by 5 del 1 minus e minus minus j0 plus the permutation so you know the uh, two point function version of this equation would be that you have two point function here replaced and here the three point function will be replaced by the two point function of t with j0 at zero temperature or you know at zero temperature massless case if you introduce mass these terms actually these two point functions start becoming non zero okay uh, only for the conformal theory this will be zero at finite temperature again this two point function will be non zero uh, you can actually explicitly calculate and you will be able to see that uh, this equation again is satisfied by the uh, the coalition function and uh, quite non trivially uh, non trivially it works out so, such when you mass deform how yeah. do you know the analog of the del dot j is equal to jj equation yeah, uh, uh, when I mass deform, uh, uh, so uh, the, the interacting theory series I have not yet done. For free theory, uh, it turns out that uh, these algebras get get actually modified. Right. For free theory, I understand. But yeah. is in principle, can we figure it out for the interacting theory, or it requires some new conceptual stuff? Yeah. So you know, for the free theory, for the ma massless case, uh, as you, your point is that you know, del mu j mu is a conformally, uh, you know, conformal primary primary operators. So that is a constant by which I determine del mu j mu right hand side. Right? Whatever the operator is here, that is a conformal primary identity, and then I write down all possible things that can uh, that I can allow in the right hand side, and then uh, by demanding that it is it has to be conformal primary. I determine what is theta is. That is the in the massive case, you know that that I will not have that extra thing. But uh, what uh, what I can do in principle that you know I'll have the free uh, I'll have the uh, CFT thing whatever appears, and then uh, probably you know I'll add few more whatever is required, and then I'll see uh, whether or not the uh, two point functions. Suppose I have some test two point function calculation done. I'll be able to see whether it works or not. So I, I have not yet done the interacting theory, but you know I, I understand your point. What you yeah, thanks. Yeah. So Sachin, I have a question for this uh, free in uh, for, for the exact symmetry itself. Uh, yeah. So you are saying that you have a general word identities, and some of the correlation functions become zero at vacuum, uh, but you can use the more general word identities to determine uh, correlation functions even in, even in uh, finite temperature. And yeah. using some kind of KMS periodicity, you have to implement, or but it's is much harder to implement in the in the momentum space, I guess. No, uh, you know, right now, you know, I would have expected that it would just not work. But right now, we are just doing a simple free theory calculation. A more complicated case, we have to do it. Uh, we'll implement slowly. But free theory, finite temperature, the equation just works out. You have to calculate and you can explicitly check that it just works. Okay. So why, why would you not have expected? I mean, these are operator equations. So this should apply in any state, right? Yeah, this would have applied to any state. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, finite at finite temperature, this vacuum zero, Q acting on zero, generally we take it to be zero. 
at final temperature i was not sure but uh, it, it looks like uh, as you say it just works out even i mean the equation works I, i would imagine because it's an operator equation then maybe some properties of but at least in principle looks like this you have the same physics involved yeah yeah it's the same physics involved that's right I That's feel the mass deformation may be a little more complicated because it's mass different deformation may be more two different yeah. UV. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. interacting uh, theory, Siraj. I have not done. Uh, I have done the interacting theory in the sense that you know uh, when I have five to the power four uh, deformation, the critical point. Then also this del mu, j mu. You know, there, uh, uh, there. I, I think I should be able to do it much more easily before going to Chan Simmons. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah. just the pre theory, the mass deformation. I'm I'm able to do. It. Okay. Yeah. I I also think that the mass deformed uh, uh, Wilson Fisher will be easy. Yeah. But some of the chances maybe that's also maybe you just have to try. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I'll, but uh, Sachin, in this case of uh, in the case of the finite temperature, you are not able to do some analog of writing down all possible structure constants using KMS or something. It might be interesting to do that or uh, uh, to see uh, like what is. Uh, Yeah, you, is, you mean that, that this kind of thing? In the, yeah, something like that. It is. Uh, yeah. Uh, at finite temperature, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, how to write down answers, etc., etc. Yeah, that that uh, there is no no concrete. Uh, I don't think there's any concrete uh, uh, like development at finite temperature. Uh, that that's one more reason I just uh, we want to explore slowly. Uh, that in Matsubara frequency, even if you do go to Euclidean, something like Matsubara. Yeah, you know, frequency. you do all those things, and you will see actually very nicely still things work out, mm. uh, including all these Matsubara things. You know. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, more details. I we are actually exploring that now, so hopefully we have. Okay, so you know, uh, so uh, one thing. Uh, yeah, let me. So I'll quickly uh, uh, and how much time do I have? Uh, maybe ten more minutes is something yeah. enough. Uh, ten more minutes. Ten, yeah. Five, so minutes. Uh, I'll actually describe very quickly two uh, two simple things. Uh, two things. Uh, number one, uh, this parity odd uh, correlation function in three D, which was not explored in the momentum space. You know, for example, the analog of PTT, even the JJO. This was not explored uh, 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 because there is a difficulty involving with the epsilon symbols. Uh, there is a lot of certain identities that one needs to certain identities are, for example, of the form you know epsilon mu nu uh, p one uh, mu rho, rho p one rho uh, p one p two mu plus some combination of epsilons are related to uh, epsilon mu p one p two. P1 mu P2 uh, P1 mu P1 yeah sorry <laughs> uh, and some some such thing you know uh, the the point is that uh, you have to be very very careful about writing down an answer because uh, you need to figure out what are the independent answers that is very very that that's one point and second even after suppose you want to use Kendrick's way you act with k kappa and you want to set it zero. Uh, k kappa on the correlator. You need to be very careful about finding out the independent forms uh, which you want to set it to zero, and that actually leads to enormous complications. So that, that's the yeah. So are, are the structure uh, are the general structures for the odd term known in position space? Yeah. So that was the uh, work done by uh, Siroman and others. Okay. So there's a close close form for the odd, odd in the structure. position space. That's right. In the position space, but in the momentum space. uh you know i i did not see any paper before you know we are i with amin and other people who are writing this paper uh, there was no such thing in the momentum space first time so even the ansaj what should be the ansaj etc etc those were not explored much yeah so uh what we do actually you know using higher spin equation we calculate this jjo uh, and then uh, i we have not yet tried using higher spin equation uh, how to go beyond this thing But uh, 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 then Skinner's way also we calculate this uh, things match. Uh, then actually we calculate JJJ three point function non abelian current JJJ three point function using we construct some explicit uh, dimension raising and spin raising operators in the uh, dimension raising and the spin raising operators uh, in the momentum space for parity or thing and that's how 
uh, 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 right now we are just uh, calculating that that is how uh, we are going and using high spin equation also will be able to. So uh, yeah, uh, maybe I, I I won't go into uh, details of it uh, in the interest of time. But uh, what I'll just write down, I'll just show you one thing that uh, you know you can construct uh, w one two minus minus plus h one mu k one k two uh, k one two dot j uh, j one plus uh, two minus delta one epsilon j one j two k one two k one two is again del del k one vector minus del del k two vector and w one two minus minus is k one two dot k one two okay this is the dimension raising operator that you need to construct in the for the parity odd thing you see the exclusive appearance of uh, epsilon and suppose i want to get jjj uh, what i will start with i'll start with theta 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 i'll activate this d1 to tilde and then i also need to act with some d11 which is a parity even uh, dimension negating and the spin raising operator that i discussed earlier and that's how we will get jjj uh, again it turns out the most difficult part of it to get the local pieces correctly once you get that thing correctly then you can add any transverse piece to it and then it works okay so that uh, we have explicitly constructed that uh, i'll not go into details uh, if you, uh, th th this thing uh, uh, i want to discuss one thing i found actually very interesting uh, uh, the, the whole reason actually why we want went to this high spin thing was that uh, we wanted to understand if you know s, s matrices in stern simons theory are very easily calculable uh, we wanted to understand if there is a connection with the if I can use higher spin symmetry to actually uh, calculate this, uh, you know, uh, S matrices. Unfortunately, uh, no progress. Uh, we have not made any progress. But uh, uh, while doing S matrix calculations, uh, you know, there is a there is one particular that Siraj will know. Uh, this particular kind of integrations uh, were actually very very important. Uh, to calculate and it, it generally took us very long long amount of time to actually ca calculate this quanti uh, quantity and in general you know l mu l mu this kind of quantity and why am i discussing this because i am interested in now going to the four point function in calculating four point function using higher spin equations okay before showing you i'll just show one piece of calculation uh, which i think uh, it will be interesting those who uh, want to do some calculation uh, but before that i just want to state the results so uh, at the at the four point function level, we were uh, using higher spin equation, slightly broken higher spin equation. We, we were very, it was uh, very easy for us to actually uh, calculate uh, this quantity in a quasi Fermionic theory, and it turned out to be same as t minus theta 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 in a free Fermionic theory plus t minus theta 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 in a uh, critical boson theory. Uh, uh, using higher spin equation in the momentum space, this result actually came out within a page. Whereas if you try to do it uh, in the poison space, it requires a full paper. Uh, it, it was a paper done in 1906 by uh, Lee, uh, something. Uh, you know, it, it, in the poison space, it's extremely complicated. But in the momentum space, it's just a one-page calculation. Okay, this is the result we we got, and using this, we can actually very easily go on go on for uh, even higher spins, uh, uh, higher spin things. Uh, which uh, uh, which we can explore. Uh, so last, uh, before I stop, last thing I just want to say about this integration because I find it very uh, cute uh, because at the time uh, when we were trying to, uh, we found it a bit difficult to actually calculate. So maybe I, I just say, uh, so actually people, uh, this is the kind of integration that you need to do. And in four di three dimension, uh, suppose you want to calculate, let's say theta, is equal to five or five for the free scalar field theory. If you want to calculate theta, 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 this four point function, P1, P2, P3, P4, with uh, momentum conservation, then this is the integration that you need to do. Okay. And uh, in order to do this integration, there's a very nice uh, trick, uh, which is that L goes to L mu tilde by L tilde square. Okay. If you do this trick, you will immediately get that D3 L tilde by l tilde square l tilde plus p1 tilde p1 tilde is also defined in terms of p1 exactly same way l tilde plus p2 tilde square l tilde plus p3 tilde square 
you see immediately the four four denominator thing which is extremely difficult to calculate has reduced to three denominator and this is the feature of the three dimension okay uh, another way of thinking about it is that you know in three dimension uh, there there is actually there is a different way of doing this integration as well and you will reach here this uh but but I, i want to show you one one more actually very uh, cute thing which is uh, suppose you have this kind of integration l mu if you do this actually it becomes even more simpler and uh, you will get uh, nothing it will just become the equivalent to 3.5 okay with one l mu in the numerator and the four denominator and you can actually use this kind of technique uh, for arbitrary else uh, uh, arbitrary number of else uh, and with the following uh, southern identity This one, which is only available in three dimension, is that L dot P one epsilon mu P one P two P three L dot P two epsilon P one mu P three and L dot P three epsilon P one P two mu. Okay. Uh, it, it turns out using this, it is enough to calculate uh, four point function free theory calculations uh, that you need to do, and uh, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Uh, we calculated them, and then using them, uh, we were able to show that the higher spin equation in the interacting theory uh, is solved in terms of the uh, uh, free theory result that I showed you earlier. Okay, in terms of free Fermion and critical Boson theory results. Uh, so, yeah. So I, I'll I'll stop here. We just uh, uh, just uh, just one one future direction, few one or two future direction. Uh, future direction of course the finite temperature and the uh, going away from conformity that that would be really nice a uh, second thing a uh, second would be that four point function spinning coordinates in the momentum space that has not been understood that uh, the structure has not been understood that's one thing and uh, and uh, uh, this conformal bootstrap program which is mainly confined into cohesion and the melian space it will be nice to understand that it's something in the momentum space so these are the things an application to cosmology these are the things that uh in future okay great uh, sachin uh, thanks for the nice talk <laughs> questions <laughs> sachin in in the paper we wrote with ofer uh we were interested in four and five point functions of the lowest dimensional scalar operator yeah i think the let's say the John Simon's deformed critical boson theory. Yes, uh, we were interested in some Taylor, some low momentum behavior of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you know more about those those correlation functions than we did at that time? Uh, so you know, uh, Siraj, you were talking about this kind of correlator, right? Uh, yeah the, the point of higher spin equation is that if i know this thing uh, actually in in one of the appendix we tried to give an attempt to get this uh, correlator class uh, uh, but you know the higher spin equation the way it works is that i need to uh, know this to calculate the uh, uh, spinning correlator but the the uh, uh, you know uh, what we simply did uh, was that uh, uh, because you see uh, uh, right um, you know uh, five point functions are not independent structures right uh, uh, th th those can be written in terms of say four point function and then attached uh, like this right sir these are the structures and then there are various combination of the structures that uh, one needs to do right uh, so uh, the 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 important point is that you know uh, here uh, let's say i have uh, here uh, this thing uh, all of them j0 what is the thing that can run here okay. so the thing that can run here are of the form j spin 2s mm -hmm. and then this spin 2s thing uh, uh, the input uh, spin 2s thing is what i can calculate using higher spin equation what well, is the diagram you drawn an op or something else like op kind of expansion or something else Yeah, this is a, in the position space. This is kind of a OP kind of expansion for us. And there's a momentum space analog of that. So what I'll do, Siraj, is that uh, first I'm going to get a result on the moment the position space, hmm. and then I'm going to use it in the momentum space uh, in the following way that you know 
Uh, I know that uh, J two S J zero J zero J zero. This is what is the non-trivial fact that is running here, and that is a non-trivial uh, four-point function that I I will be needing here. I won't need any other non-trivial spinning coordinates. And the fact that uh, you know J two J zero J zero J zero, it is just determined in terms of free fermion and the free bosonic theory. I can use this knowledge that you know J two S also will have the similar structure. Okay. And then uh, I will be able to uh, write down this five form. You know, there will be of course uh, a double trace operators. All those things, non-triviality will be there, which I don't know how to handle. But at the end, this uh, J zero five point function can as well be written in terms of J zero five point function of the free fermionic theory and the J zero five point function of the critical bosonic theory very naively. It's not. I don't. I'm not sure if it is correct or wrong. But very naive analysis actually gives okay. me that. Thank you. Any further question? Okay. If not, I have a short question. So, is it possible that you could compute in this higher spin theory something like uh, uh, entanglement entropy of a finite integral using Cartier-like techniques? Uh, uh, sorry, entanglement entropy in the momentum space or in the position? No, 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 in position space, of course, not in momentum space. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, just a finite interval in 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 using Cartier-like methods. Hmm. Siraj, Siraj would know better. So, Siraj, do you have? Yeah, uh, you know, the simplest kind of entanglement entropy you could compute is half of a sphere with the other half of the sphere. Let's say we are on S two. Ah, that's fine. You can cut the S2 into half and try to compute the entanglement entropy of half with the other half. Now let's stick to a, um, let's stick to a conformal theory. Then there's a general result that this entanglement entropy is closely related to this S3 partition function. You know, so the so the simplest question along the line that you're asking, Ayan, is that can you compute the sphere partition function in uh, these these theories? And even this has never been done. You know, it's the simplest. Entanglement entropy question. The reason I think it could be done if one worked hard enough, but the reason it's not been done is the following: you know, everything that is easy to do in these theories is things that are leading order in logic. Now, in the sphere partition function, the pure Chern Simons part, part gives you an n square contribution to the sphere partition function at logic, and then the matter part is one order subleading because the amount of matter is n. So what you need to do is to compute uh, one subleading order at large n if you want to want to be able to do this. That's you want to get a result that goes beyond just pure chance Simons. Hmm. That's somehow always hard uh, because it feels hard. Nobody, I think, has ever really seriously attempted it. But I think it should be possible if one really hmm. wants. But I mean, just just to say again, you know, the complication is that even pure chance Simons theory has non-trivial entanglement entropies, and that is order n square. Mm -hmm. Things that are easy to compute in this theory are those that are zero for the pure chance Simons theory. So the matter part is the leading part at large. Ah, I see. Okay. Whereas you're asking for a quantity that's non-zero and leading order in in uh, in uh, in the pure chance Simons theory because that's n square because there are n square gauge bosons. Hmm. This is then like a one over n correction and always subleading corrections are hard to calculate. Uh, I think probably because of that people haven't seriously thought about doing it. But if there was hmm. a really good reason to want it, I think it could be done. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, like in uh, computing the quantum extremal surface in uh, in ADS three, for example. Then I would need to do such a computation of uh, some. So okay, this is the, this will be really hard then to it to. Will be hard. I don't think it's prohibitively hard. It's just something mm -hmm. that requires a, a strong motivation because it'll be months. I mean, it would not be mm -hmm. turning a crank. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Shiraz. So thanks everybody also. And let us thank uh, Sachin for this great talk again. <laughs> and see you uh, next week. Next week we have a uh, present, we will have a so, bi biology talk actually by somebody from TIFR whom Shiraz may know as Srividya Ayer Biswas. Uh, she's going to talk about uh, stochasticity in biology. I think it will be a very nice talk, a colloquium like talk. So just for a change. Uh, Okay, so hope to see you back in next week and have a nice weekend and uh, rest of the week. Bye. <laughs> Bye, <Sanjay>. thank you. <laughs>